So we're, go we're going to receive a passionate engineer from MIT. He, we will talk about conditions of success in research. Uh, Kamel graduated from MIT in 1986. President Ronald Reagan personally gave him the award of uh, Presidential Young Investigator. Uh, Kamel consults globally for many companies. He's a member for, uh, with, uh, in many associations. His career is exceptional. So let's welcome Kamel Yusuf to me. Marhaba Bik Kamel. Shukran, shukran. Bismillah, assalamu alaikum. Bonjour uh, tout le monde. Um, je suis très heureux et très honoré d'être parmi vous. Euh, je dois fé féliciter l'équipe de FECRA de, pour m'avoir invité et aussi de, de, de cet euh, événement euh, fabuleux. Je pense que je suis à Hollywood euh, maintenant. <rire> Marron, Tofik, euh, Amel et tous les membres de, de leurs équipes, euh, ils sont dynamiques, ils sont jeunes, ils utilisent la technologie. Je pense que ça, c'est le genre de gens qu'on doit euh, utiliser dans notre euh, économie. Merci. <rire> euh, euh, une autre chose que je dois saluer, nos étudiants et nos jeunes chercheurs, parce que euh, vous êtes euh, la richesse de ce pays, vous êtes la vraie ressource de ce pays et vous êtes le futur. Je vous salue. Merci. Euh, Marhoun m'a suggéré de, de faire cette présentation en anglais et j'espère que ça sera OK avec, euh, avec vous. Euh, success. Um, a lot of people think that it is a straight line that goes from point A to point B for uh, some objective. But in reality, it's something like this. In practice, there is no straight line. It just goes around and then you have to adapt and change especially in today's world where everything is going so fast, technology is moving so fast, the development, and so on. And so in this presentation, what I wanted to do is to speak about three things. One is messages, one is that the um, initial conditions or the initial circumstances of a person in general do not matter. And the second point is that maybe to emphasize some requirements that have to do with success. And then in the end, I want to emphasize again the third point that in any aspect that we do, we have to include the uh, work that will benefit others, not just for us, but also for others. Uh, initial conditions. I was born in the city of uh, Qsar al-Bukhari, uh, it's about 150 kilometers um, south of Algiers. Uh, you can see in the top left corner um, the uh, main street. Uh, these uh, images, as you know, they are older images. Um, from that uh, picture, it looks like the population at that time was not um, uh, very big. Um, and then on the top right, that is a market or a souk. And we had once a week on every Sunday a lot of the villages uh, or people from the surrounding villages would come by you know, to buy and sell things in the, uh, in the market. The whole economy at that time uh, was uh, based on agriculture. Um, a lot of us um, uh, were poor. Um, and when we were kids, we played with each other, right? And we were nice to each other. We were even nicer to Alel. Alel was the only one who had a soccer ball, a football. And we were nice to him because we had to play. So even though our neighborhood was actually a pretty big neighborhood, but he was the only one who had a soccer ball. And some of us even played with, you know, bare feet, without any shoes, because if you have one pair of shoes, you don't want to ruin it playing soccer. 
or football, so you have to play barefoot. And then, uh, however, the surrounding area is beautiful, as you can see here, especially in the springtime. A lot of colors in these fields, and also in the mountains that surround the, uh, the city, magnificent cities. When I was doing some work for Honeywell Company in, um, in Phoenix, Arizona, and the first time I went there, it looked like I was in the area of Qas al-Bukhari. So, uh, in that way. Um, we were happy, I was happy. We shared, we helped each other. Uh, we were very competitive in school, so who can come first in math and physics and so on. And I loved to make things, you know, at that time. However, my father was killed when in the uh, revolution, when I was about maybe two or two and a half years. And I skipped school, so the students in the back there don't follow my steps in that, uh, okay? Uh, so I skipped school, and I was actually very weak in, in mathematics and shy, though I could not speak or talk. Uh, at that time, we didn't have many books. We had no information or access to information. And this list actually can go on and on and on and on. Yeah. However, what I wanted to emphasize today is that do not let any of these circumstances limit you. Okay, you have to think positive, you have to think ahead. The uh, circum circumstances um, uh, can be anything for, any, uh, for anybody, right? So focus on your future and build that positive um, uh, aspect of yourself uh, in that way. Uh, so alhamdulillah, things worked out and I ended up in Boston. I did not speak English and I went there. And a lot of our students today speak English a lot better than I do. And when I went there, I, I remembered only two words, yes and no. And then smile a lot, okay? Because I don't understand anything. Um, so this is, uh, this is Boston. Uh, Boston is uh, a very nice city. And it's also distinguished. There are uh, more than 50 universities and colleges in the Boston area, right? Among them, MIT and Harvard uh, University. Um, so now, Let's move to the, uh, maybe some of the necessary conditions for, for success. So they say, you know, what is the secret of success? Well, maybe making the right decisions. Well, how do you make the right decisions? You have to have experience. And how do you get experience? You have to make a lot of wrong decisions. So which one is it? The right decision or the wrong decision? Actually, maybe it's a little bit more, more than this. So I made a little chart here. And I wanted to point out some key elements or key categories that I think have to be, as for this part of success, either that the person has these things at the beginning or that they can acquire them as they move ahead. So, of course, the first one, I think, is passion. And we can talk more about this one. There's a lot of discussion where this passion comes first or the success comes first. And this passion is actually the spark that, uh, that does this. And the person will have a pleasure doing this thing that you live it, you breathe it, that is the passion about something that you will identify. And then the next one is this aspiration. Okay, talent in the end is not enough. Somebody can have talent, right? But if they don't actually work that talent and exercise and do all of the things that go with it, you know, it's not going to work uh, in the end. And then the other important thing that I want to mention is that do things not for money and not for position. Okay, do it for your knowledge and for these things. You know, in many places, people come and come and call you and say hello and shake your hand because you are in a position. Once you step down from that position, they might not say hello to you. So remember that. Uh, the other thing is that one has to build in themselves this belief to achieve, that they are able to do it, because that works in the mind and is very, very important. Right? And then somebody would have like, the drive, the perseverance, so that they can succeed uh, in that way. Um, the next thing is two things. One that is coming from the inside of a person. I made a list of these things. The confidence, the discipline, uh, integrity, being positive about things. Right? Because there are things that can slow the person down. There are things that can even make the person stop and not move in that way. Um, so these are maybe person can work on themselves. And then there are things from the outside, the environment. No one can succeed, you know, on his own. 
whether they know it or not. There are people in the environment that are helping that person, okay, from their peers, from their mentors, from family members, and all that. And we do all of this so that in the end we are doing some good contribution, you know, to the people, right? Good for humanity. And then the person can believe that this is my purpose. This is why I was created to do this thing. So, I don't want to fall down. There's a table behind me. Uh, so these are too many things. So if I had to pick maybe three or four things, right, so that I can talk about, they would be the following, okay? So first, some people around you. Um, so I had a lot of help when I was a kid, you know, from my brothers and my sisters. And I mentioned that I was very, very weak in mathematics, and I'm showing it in this delta function that I will explain in a minute. Um, and then one of the summers that my brother Mahfouz, you know, he taught me math. So I went from zero, okay, and then there was a jump, because the year after that, I won the first prize in mathematics, and I was very happy about that. The only thing is that I thought it was a delta function, meaning blip, it just happens once, and then it goes back to zero. So I started working day and night, because I was afraid that it was going to go away. Alhamdulillah, it's still here with me. Yes. Um, so, so people around you help you uh, in, um, in doing that. It could be your mother, your sister, or your father, things of that sort. The other important thing is that let the person actually gain strength in, in doing these things and being focused is to recognize and appreciate this help that is coming. Some of it directly, some of it is indirect. Some people call it the silent support, right? And that is very, very important psychologically, how to do that so that the person can be in their strength all the time. And then, as I said before, no one can succeed on their own, okay? And if a person thinks that way, then they are arrogant, and then they will fail. <clears throat> Success is doing what you love and making it a career. Well, tell me about yourself. What is your passion? So the young boys say, well, all I love to do is watch football and surf the internet. Will you still hire me? Okay, so I think this is maybe a hobby, somebody can confusing a hobby from uh, a passion. In my case, when I um, first went to MIT, and then you see yourself among these people around you, they are handpicked from all over the world, super intelligent, hardworking, they're like machines. And you say, well, how am I going to compete with these people? So then I thought maybe the logical thing to do is to pick some area that I am very familiar with. And it happened to be these two things, right? The fluid dynamics, and then the one on the right, these structures. Structures, beams, and things that bend, and things of that sort, and then fluid dynamics, you know, things that have to be like a fluid-like. And then, of course, I use the scientific method to choose which option shall I take, A or B. And it went like this, Ini, mini, mini, mo, hold the tiger by the toe, shadi, madi, qali, rasi, hold hadi, mullahad. And I took care of this structures area, that's what I started doing. And it just happened that at that time, I took another course in control systems, and it was like fascinating. It had like advanced mathematics, simulation techniques, uh, stochastics, stochastic processes, um, uh, what else, uh, estimation theory, Everything is intelligent and moving and so on. And they say, oh my God, this is it. This is the element that I am looking for. This is what I want to do. And so by the end of that semester, I switched completely from this, one of these areas that I had done a lot of work in and understood it and I know the background and all that, to an area that I had known nothing about. Literally, nothing about that one. But then because I loved it so much that I can sit down maybe in one sitting and perhaps I can read a book from end to end uh, in that way. So that means the passion that you end up or the things that you end up doing may not be necessarily in something that you are comfortable with. So a person can try and go out and not be afraid to look at other areas and see where the opportunity is uh, in that way. Uh, so like in this example, 
the passion come, came first. And then with that passion, I was doing everything to succeed in, uh, in it. So there was the, the, the vision, right? And then you do all the steps that have to be there so that you can achieve it, right? Um, another point is that I would recommend is to look high. Look at the very high, okay? We see in many places people doing like uh, uh, partnerships and so on with uh, med mediocre companies or mediocre institutions and so on. What are you going to take from a mediocre al-radi? ماذا تأخذوا من الرضي إلا الرضاء وحتى الرضاء هذيك اسمها سنيبا سون بورسون اوكي دي من النقصة So in my case I wanted to look at this MIT but the day when because sometimes a person say something to you and if you are paying attention right then you can change your direction So I was taking English and I said earlier that um, I did not know much and after maybe the first two months I was in, in a uh, an English program, so we had classes in the morning and then in the afternoon we'll be divided in small groups, two or three people with an English instructor, and then they take you out and then they ask you to go ask a question from somebody and then how to go, let's say, from one place to another. And you're supposed to remember all of that and come back and tell them that. Imagine you go and you have no idea, you ask, sometimes you don't even finish the question and the guy just leaves, right? And then, and I don't know how they, this woman instructor chose the people because these people just spoke so fast and they, you know, did not pronounce all of the words. And then you go back and you just say, you know, I did not understand anything. So we were on the right-hand side of this river that you see. This river in Boston divides the Boston side and the Cambridge side. On the left-hand side is where MIT is. This was about 40 years ago, and I still remember exactly what she said, word by word. So she pointed to MIT and she said, do you know what those buildings are? That is MIT. Some of the most intelligent people work there. And I said to myself, I have to be with those people. And again, from that time, I started working day and night, even when I was taking English, I started attending classes in math and so on, so that I can prepare myself and attend uh, this place. So aim high. This is actually a very, a very special place. I mean, you can, maybe with one or two phone calls, you can be speaking to the leading expert in the world in a special area uh, of that sort. And then the last one, maybe on the self-improvement. Okay, maybe some of you have seen the Matrix the movie. Right? So, the uh, Keanu Reeves, the American actor, he plays Neo. The only thing is that he became a martial arts master just in one click. Okay, downloaded everything. Unfortunately, we don't have this machine today. We don't have like a special hat. And then I go on the screen and then I click physics, math, da 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 da. Click and then. Mm, Okay, and then after maybe one minute, you know, I am downloaded and I am like a Superman, right? We don't have that. So we have to do, unfortunately, the old-fashioned way. We have to work hard and we have to understand. One of the things we need to do is to invest in the mind. Among all the creatures that exist, the human being is the only one who has been distinguished by its mind. Al-aql al insan. And so that means we have to do continuous exercises so that we can sharpen this mind in this way. We can develop our curiosity so that we can move along. We can excel in whatever field that we choose, right? And then we can also do innovation and discoveries uh, in that way. Today, the world is moving so fast. So what can happen is that I may be relevant today, but then tomorrow I can be very, very irrelevant. Right? And I will be put on the side because I am not up to date and, uh, and so on. Um, so I think there is a, a video. In 2000,
2002, a big oil company approached this team of mechanical engineers at MIT in hopes of creating a robot that could easily move through oil wells. We were brainstorming with them about ideas on how to maybe develop the new types of devices that could be used. Uh, not only for the so these are robots that we're doing that uh, move and explore the oceans. My face above the water. And also monitoring. Uh, the fish's bodies are built with polymer and silicone compounds cast in a mold. It has a minimum number of uh, actuators in them. I mean, the motors that you use, uh, not maybe 10 or 20 or 100, but maybe a, a small amount. Wave after wave, wave after wave. So these are some of the work that we had in uh, CNN and a uh, few other uh, areas. These are automatic uh, systems that uh, do robotic inspection and repairs of uh, pipes. Um, or gas pipes, for example, or water pipes, um, and uh, uh, instrumenting these kind of systems in this way. This is a project with uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, these are other uh, autonomous uh, robots, again, that move in the water uh, by themselves and, uh, and do some fancy moves and so on. So a lot of this work was Features in some media like uh, these kinds of magazines and, and so on. Yeah. Uh, this is another work that we have done with uh, uh, Samsung company and other ones. These are like high speed imaging that you can see materials being dissolved or being made at the nanoscale and at the same time at the uh, video scale. So you can inject acid, for example, you can see it how things are, um, are happening in front of you. Atomic force microscopy is a powerful uh, method used in various uh, applications or various areas of uh, nanotechnology. Um, applications of uh, atomic force microscopes or AFMs. Yeah. So that was in a meeting where they uh, gave us an award for this kind of uh, uh, project that we had done in developing these instruments uh, that are being used in that way. Uh, this is, by the way, I think the first of its kind uh, in the world uh, in terms of speed and range and so on. Some other work that we have done with NASA in the looking for the mission of the system of the discovery returning to the space station paving the way for future missions beyond. Those who are the system to come on for the L'engin principal de la navette spatiale. Uh, it's it with these sort of uh, things that we have done with companies, and these are actually some uh, early pictures of the uh, work that we had done on uh, high-speed robots in that way. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Kamel, we, we're running out of time. Yes. Uh, you I can stop now. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's take thank questions. Thank you so much. All I wanted to say is, uh, in the last thing, is that in the Arabic world language, falah is the word that means, has success in it without failure after it. Okay? Le succès sans échec. And then the, the last thing that I wanted to say is that everything that we do, whether the contributions and the role that we need to play and all that, we need to think about in, the, in this end, you know, the success. Why, why are we succeeding and all that? You know, for in the end to help people. If you are in Algeria, to help the people here and to have them benefit from these uh, activities. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Kamel a souhaité prendre la première question d'un étudiant. Donc je demande à un étudiant de, de demander une question. Il est là. Présentez-vous. Uh, well, student? Yeah, I'm student first which, university. Which university? Uh, you can say Ansim. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's a, it's a, Business school, kind okay. of. Yeah. 
this cool, yeah. By the way, so sir, first, like I can't explain my feelings right now because my heart is beating so fast from the overdose of inspiration you just gave us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, actually, I want to ask you two things or two requests. The first one is for students. Actually, for the moment, we are facing the same obstacles that you faced before, but maybe in a different way. So what's your message for us as students to, like, to go through these obstacles and reach what you want to reach and make Algeria a better place? Yeah. The second thing, or the request, it's for the successful people like you, the Algerians that they are sitting right here, that they have successful stories, but sometimes they just don't share it with us. Because for us, maybe we don't, all what we need is some support, some words, some stories of success that give us the hope and inspiration. And there's a lot of Algerians, people that have it. So what's your message? Because you took this step and you came from MIT, USA, till here to Algeria to give us this inspiration. While we already have also people like you here in Algeria. So what's your message for them? Because I, I believe and I'm sure that there is maybe people like this sitting here between us. So what's your message for them? Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But if if, before I answer the question, can I ask you to come up here? <laughs> I decided to have a small gift, a very small gift, to the first student who asked a question. <laughs> but you want to look at it, maybe. Open it, yeah. Because when I was his age, I, I did not ask questions. So sure. this is why. Please, yeah. So. Maybe I'm going to be aggressive. Huh? <laughs> yeah, be aggressive. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is the original iPad Air, 128 gigabyte. Uh, 120 giga. You will have uh, plenty of space with this one. Excellent. To be honest, to be honest, like I'm really, really happier to meet you more than maybe than having this one and to see you today. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so now I forgot the question. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think your message yeah, to so, all these... Yeah, so I think the message, as I mentioned before, is that any country that is succeeding, a lot of their investment is for the people. There is no way that any country can succeed unless you, we invest in the people and we raise the level of the people in all of these different uh, areas. I'll just give you an example. If you look at the income, le, le, le revenu de l'Algérie en 2013, c'était à peu près de 60 milliards de dollars. Okay? Et le, ce revenu-là, c'était à peu près de 98% de, qui vient des hydrocarbures. Okay? Euh, et en Algérie, on est presque 40 millions euh, de, 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 de working force euh, 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 le, le, on est à peu près de peut-être 12 à 14 millions de personnes qui travaillent. Et si on compare avec une petite société Apple qui, make, qui, qui fabrique les iPads, les iPhones, ils sont moins de 100 000, moins de 100 000 employés. Et le revenu dans cette même période est à peu près de 170 milliards de dollars. OK, donc une petite société qui est basée sur... La ressource humaine basée sur l'innovation et un pays, mais le pays comme l'Algérie, il y a beaucoup de pays dans ce, dans ce genre qui, qui sont basés sur les, le revenu des hydrocarbures. Et donc, on, je pense qu'on doit refaire ou bien re, repenser la, le, le modèle du business. Ok, je, ce que je pense, c'est que c'est que chaque pays doit être euh, euh, opérer comme une multinationale. Okay? Et dans, le, dans ce cas-là, on a les, nos jeunes chercheurs et nos jeunes étudiants qu'on doit créer cet environnement 
okay, pour qu'il qu te succède in the, uh, in the end. Yeah. Je prendrai deux autres questions de la salle. Euh, oui, vous, allez. Oui. Peut-être. Oui, je sais. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Euh, bonsoir à tout le monde. C'est Bilal Lourari, le Centre Arabo-Africain de l'Investissement. Bienvenue, Monsieur Kamel Toumi. Euh, je vous dire que les cafés de l'Algérie et de l'Algérie sont en train de se faire. Comme les cafés de l'Algérie et de l'Algérie sont en train de se faire. Ils 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 أن تأتي بها لتواجه أبناء الجزائر وتواجه كل النجاحات الحاجة الثانية ما هي يعني ربما اقتراحك يعني كقوة اقتراح منطلق أنك مبدع جزائري في في أمريكا بما أنه الكثير يعلم أنه في الجزائر هناك احتياط ما يسمى بالمعرفة بديل لاحتياط البترول وحتى الغاز الصخري وما جاوره فهذا السؤال الأول أما السؤال الثاني ما هو السؤال الأول؟ يعني كيف ترون يعني ضرورة تأسيس احتياط معرفي في الجزائر يعني من خلال استغلال طاقات الكفاءات الموارد البشرية لسيور سيمان وبديل للغاز للطاقات النافذة كالبترول نعم. والغاز الصخري وأخواته نعم. حاجة ثانية الكفاءات المعطلة في الجزائر ربما البيروقراطية هذه لا يجهل أي واحد لكن نجتهد كلنا لنخرج من هذا السياق لكن الكثير من الشباب اللي هنا تلقى عنده كفاءات عنده مواهب لكن ربما تموت الموهبة تاعو ولا القدرات تاعو ربما في في المهد لا ربما يتعرف حتى يخرج خارج أرض الوطن في أين السبب في ظل أنه وجود إرادة سياسية لفخامة رئيس الجمهورية في ظل وجود يعني ذكاء كبير من طرف الشباب ولكن الإرادة هي اللي تفوق دوما شكرا ميرسي بوكو بارك الله فيك هي الكفاءات الجزائرية موجودة داخل الجزائر وموجودة في خارج الجزائر يعني هو الإنسان يعني يشوف يعني يعني كيف يستعمل هذا الموارد البشرية وتستعمل الموارد البشرية لما تشوف الجزائريين يعني أكثر من الجزائر اللي مشاو للخارج في مثلا في أوروبا أو في أمريكا يعني بصفة عامة كلهم نجحوا الناس هذويا يعني هو نفس الإنسان يعني انتقل من الجزائر إلى مكان آخر معنى هذا أنه هذا الإنسان يعني فيه المكونات هذه ها مكونات تاع نجاح ومكونات تاع فوز وكذا فإذا كان يعني إنسان يراعي دولة لازم يعرف كيف يستعمل هذا هذا الكفاءات الموجوده في البلاد وموجوده اللي في خارج البلاد وكيف يعني به تنظم هذا هذا الموارد حتى تكون فعاله في في في, في الاستعمال نتاعها لانه يمكن اذا كان النظام يعني ماهوش ماهوش في المستوى اه يمكن تبذل جهود يعني كبرى اه لكن لكن الريزلتا يعني الاوتبوت اللي يكون يكون ناقص اوكي آه فكيف تنظم هذه كل البلدان اللي نشتغل معها في في اليابان في كوريا في سنغافوره في فنلندا كلهم عندهم يعني آه هيئه من اجونس ولا من بيرو ولا مينيستير اللي يستكلف الا بالرؤيه والاستراتيجيه نتاع البلاد اوكي وهذه الرؤيه تكون كامله وشامله للبلاد حتى تعرف يعني وين راك رايح فهذه تنظم تنظم ال تنظم يعني الخطوات هذه وتنظم يعني المسير نتاع نتاع الناس هذه. ف فنظن ان هذه يعني نقطه مهمه جدا يعني مثلا الجزائر وبلدان يعني كما الجزائر لازم تكون عندهم يعني هيئه اللي تشوف هذا 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 الرؤيه. مثلا في سنغافوره احنا نشتغل معهم حوالي يعني 15 سنه. اوكي عندهم هذا الهيئه اي دي بي الايكونوميك ديفلوبمنت بورد. ها هذا عندهم ما عندهم حتى شغل اخر الا الرؤيه والاستراتيجيه نتاع البلاد لكن يدير لك على 15 سنه اوكي ويدير فيها التكوين نتاع الانسان والتكوين نتاع الميتي ناسيونال ومش عارف شنو يعني هذا هو لانه ما نقدروش يعني ناخذوا حاجه هي وحدها ناخذوا يعني الموضوع نتاع الطلبه ونتاع الباحثين ماهوش وحده هذاك داخل في الصناعه وداخل في يعني 
لاسبي ايكونوميك تاع لو بي داخل مع يعني كيف نتعاملوا مع يعني الخارج كلها داخله في بعضها بعض ما نقدروش يعني نفرقوا من هذا لهذا لازم نظام اللي هو يعني يكون شامل لهذا لهذا الشيء Nous sommes très en retard. Je vais prendre la, vraiment la dernière, mais s'il vous plaît, rapidement. Oui. Hello. Non, mais c'est la dernière. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. We're t- uh, 10 minutes late. Tadal. Apple Vision. Oui. 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 Petite précision, si, si vous permettez, parce qu'elle peut avoir son importance. Euh, vous avez dit en ce qui concerne l'Algérie que euh, euh, notre revenu était de 60 milliards de dollars et que euh, 90% euh, venait du pétrole. Là, il faut rectifier. Hein. Notre revenu, notre PIB est de 200 milliards de dollars. Hein, et c'est les revenus du pétrole qui sont 60 milliards de dollars. Et euh, le pétrole ne représente pas 90% des revenus de l'Algérie, mais, tro- mais 30%. 90% des exportations de l'Algérie, euh, 30%, ils représentent 30% de nos revenus. Alors, c'est une... le, 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 le data que, oui, que oui, j'ai, le PIB que j'ai est eu, de 200 c'est milliards. Le World c'est... Bank. Oui, non, une, je dis cela pourquoi Je dis cela pourquoi La Banque parce mondiale que... que j'ai utilisé oui. les. Non, les non moi, je, ce sont les données du FMI hein, et de oui. la Banque mondiale. 60 oui. milliards de dollars, ce sont les revenus. Je ne veux, veux pas donner une leçon. Mais là. Mais même il y a 200 milliards de dollars. Là Là. Même il y a 200 milliards de non, dollars. Non, non, non. C'est non. très important parce que je reviens d'ailleurs à votre exposé. Parce qu'il y a une question qui me préoccupe depuis Faut ce bien. matin, c'est notre perception de la réalité. Mm. Notre perception de la réalité. Euh, on, moi, moi, j'ai remarqué que les entrepreneurs, ceux qui réussissent, comme M. Arabrab, comme d'autres entrepreneurs, ce sont ceux qui, ont, qui avaient à la fois euh, de l'optimisme, une perception exacte des, des, des potentialités de l'Algérie. Ouais de ces possibilités, des réalités euh, de l'Algérie et une vision aussi optimiste. Et une question que je me pose, hein, que je me pose euh, parfois je me demande pourquoi euh, nous avons une perception des réalités qui peut parfois être démobilisatrice. Je vous dis cela parce que, par exemple, ce matin, j'ai entendu quelqu'un dire que euh, l'Algérie était un pays riche. C'est faux. L'Algérie n'est pas un pays riche. Le revenu par habitant de l'Algérie est de 5600 dollars par habitant. C'est l'équivalent de la Tunisie. Hein euh, un pays comme le Liban a deux fois le revenu par habitant de l'Algérie. Un pays comme l'Espagne, un pays comme l'Espagne qui nous semble être en crise, a cinq fois, à 25 000 dollars par, euh, par habitant, cinq fois le revenu de l'Algérie. Je dis cela parce que souvent nous vivons avec des idées reçues et qui nous mettent en état de faiblesse. Or, l'entrepreneur, c'est quelqu'un qui, qui s'adapte aux réalités, qui s'adapte aux, aux contraintes et qui euh, les connaît. Alors, lorsqu'on parle de, de, de clichés comme ça, qui sont répétés, alors une question se pose. Pourquoi nous avons parfois cette perception de la réalité qui est pessimiste, je, euh, qui ne correspond pas je, 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 aux faits je, 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 L'Algérie euh, n'est pas un pays riche. Elle n'est je, pas je, un pays riche. Je, je vous remercie pour le, la question et le commentaire. أنا جو أنا جي دوني هذا سكون من إكزومبل، أوكي، بور سولينيي لامبورتونس دو لينوفاسيون، لامبورتونس دي جون، دي جون شيرشور، سي با لي دولار 60 ميل دولار ولا 200 ميل دولار، هذيك سي ريان، ميم إذا كان 200 400 ميل دولار، 400 مليار دو دولار، أوكي، جو فيلا كومباري أون أوتخ فوا أفيك أبل، ونقول كومون كو أبل، Elle a, elle a un revenu aussi élevé. Okay. Et je parlais aussi de, d'un système qui doit être modernisé, un système qui doit être efficace. Vous avez mentionné M. Wavrab, qui est euh, au premier rang. Euh, sa société peut être, la multinationale, une dix fois plus performante, ou bien, ou bien encore plus, si le système... Hein, qui est, euh, qui, euh, comment dirais-je, euh, euh, facilite les choses qui, pour les entrepreneurs à tous les niveaux. Aux États-Unis, pour ouvrir une, 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 une firme, même pas une heure, même pas. OK euh, On a parlé ce matin des 51 49. Euh, dans d'autres pays, avec un exemple. 
dans un pays de l'Asie avec lequel on travaille, une firme qui fait deux produits, deux produits très simples. Le, le, les dépenses annuelles est à peu près de 50 millions de dollars. 50 millions. Mais le revenu, le revenu est de 2 milliards de dollars. OK C'est un business où peut-être euh, tout le monde veut être dans un business pareil. OK Mais quand le gouvernement du pays hôte à cette multinationale a seulement entendu que la firme veut faire une expansion, le gouvernement a payé l'expansion. La firme a dit qu'ils ont de l'argent, ils peuvent faire leur propre expansion. OK. Mais les ils chauffent les autres gouvernements, comment qu'ils font les démarches OK. Maintenant, on parle de la modernisation, on parle de la nouvelle technologie, on parle de la tessière, le management. Les choses sont complètement changées. Le management de la technologie, le management du personnel, de la ressource humaine, le management des coopérations avec les multinationales. C'est pas, c'est des choses qu'on doit avoir des jeunes, qu'on doit former dans ces domaines-là pour pour qu'on on peut être très très efficace dans toutes les activités qu'on qu fasse. Merci. Kamel Toumi est là. Vous pouvez lui demander des questions à la conférence. Merci beaucoup, c'est Kamel. Merci.